a long time to make a tutorial. Just, you know, uh, life just getting in the way, life and deadlines and tons and tons of work. Uh, so I'm just now starting to get into the swing of things here. So I'm, I'm going to show you a little quick little Unity thing, and I'm going to take a kind of a roundabout way of getting there just so I can show you a bunch of different features along the way. But uh, before I do anything in Unity, let's bring up this in the Unity forums here under the iOS development. Uh, unfortunately, I was uh, kind of overzealous in my upgrading of Xcode and iOS SDK, and I didn't see this on the Unity forums before I did that. So there's a known issue between this version of the SDK and Unity. So the Unity Xcode project that gets created, even though your project is error-free, it's going to not work correctly. And so until they put out a patch, if you have not already upgraded one of these, don't do it until they fi fixed it. Uh, so until then, I'm going to start working back on Arena Champions game, which I was working on before, which is going to be out for multiple platforms, not just iOS and Android, but uh, I might put it out on the desktop as well, because I'm writing it with a, you know, um, kind of cross-platform uh, mouse input code. So anyway, uh, to the tutorial. So uh, someone was asking me a U Unity question about how could you animate a texture on an object, like animate the UVs, like I did in the Blender tutorial I did before about animating UVs, and it's actually not that difficult. So let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, let's go ahead and create an object, game object, that we can animate a texture onto. So let's go ahead and game object, create other, and let's create a sphere. And let's move this look out. Let's uh, size this uh, sphere. Uh, I'll hit the R key on the keyboard. And in case you didn't know the sh keyboard shortcuts for these, okay, this is the pan. This is translate. Oops. This is rotate. And this is scale. And the keyboard shortcuts are similar to what's in Maya. Q, W, E, and R. Okay, R and W. Okay, so now we have a sphere and it's, it's kind of a selected crop. You know, it's, it looks um, the right size. And uh, let's go ahead and give it a material uh, to animate. So let's create our own material. And uh, then we'll drop that material onto the sphere. And then we'll attach a script to animate it. Okay, so now over here in my materials uh, part here of the project window here, uh, materials folder is probably created uh, for us already by Unity. Let's go ahead and select that uh, folder and then right click and go to create and we'll create a material. Okay, and let's call this test mat. Okay, so that's very simple enough. I'm just going to leave it. We got a diffuse type of material, which is fine. And I'm going to go ahead and select a texture to put onto this material by clicking on the little select button there. All right, and then let's scroll through and we'll get this funky looking green nebula texture. Select that and you can see it's already been applied. Okay, now we can go ahead and just, um, there's a couple ways we could drag and drop it onto the sphere, but we could also select the sphere and then here under the mesh renderer, you can see here we have options for the mesh renderer, which is what actually renders the object. So a lot of times you might want to have an object that is there and affects things, but it's not actually visible, so you could just uncheck the mesh renderer uh, in order to do that. Uh, in this case, of course, we want it to be visible. Also, you could have it selectively cast or not cast shadows or receive shadows. And you can see here the number of materials is one, and the type of material is set to the default uh, diffuse. So let's go ahead and click on the little circle next to it. Brings up our uh, material window. And you can see I have a lot of materials here already, so it's kind of hard to find that. So let's just go ahead up here in this little uh, text uh, bar up here. We can just start typing the name of the material, which was test mat, and there it is. starts showing up. So it's an easy way to select it. So we'll just select that, and it's already been applied. Okay? So uh, the other thing we need to do is we need to uh, create a script that's going to animate the texture on there. All right, and I've already created a script in the past, and under our uh, project window, I'll just, again, it, every one of these windows here has a little, uh, most of these windows, they have a little finder, and you just click in there, and I think I called it something like animate material. There it is, animate material. So I can just select that, and I'll just drag and drop that onto the sphere. And you can see that it's been applied. You can see it here in the inspector window. 
And I'll just go ahead and click on the little cog here and edit the script so you can see what the script does. Okay, so here's the script. It's a very simple script. Uh, before we start, let's go ahead and play this and make sure it's running and everything looks right. It might take a while to load up. Okay, so you see it's kind of swirling there. Oh, wait, you know, let's go ahead and, well, let's let's go through the script and we'll see what's going on here. Uh, so we've got two variables. We've got a variable called scroll speed and we've got a variable called offset. And then simply two lines are, are all that we need in the update function. Uh, we have one line that just increases the offset by a certain amount. In this case, we've got time dot delta time times the scroll speed. And uh, most scripts have it just as that. You can see I encapsulated this uh, inside of its self and then I divided by 10 because I found out that everything seemed to be going very very quickly uh, much too fast and so I decided to just put it in here and divide by 10 it seemed to work out pretty good uh, so the offset every uh, update uh, tick it's going to increase the offset and then finally the uh, line that actually renders the uh, or, or actually offsets the texture is renderer.material dot set texture offset. So basically whenever you want to mess with materials on your object you use renderer dot material dot something. Okay? So set texture offset of course is going to set the offset of the texture and uh, the texture in this case uh, is going to be main text which is the kind of constant variable which means the color texture of the object. You could also if you look in the documentation there's a couple different variables you could put in here like bump map or uh, I think there's a a normal map, map and specular map and stuff like that. And finally, the, the, the coordinates that you want the texture to be offset by. So here we're feeding into this uh, vector2 uh, variable here, the offset uh, on the x-axis, and we're not offsetting anything on the y-axis. Let's go ahead and change that and see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and set the x-axis to not offset and the y-axis to access the offset variable. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, it'll take a little while to kind of compile here and stuff with the uh, screen capture software running. Now you can see that it's actually running sort of, uh, you know, cascading down. The texture is kind of cascading down, which looks a bit more like, uh, looks a bit cooler, I think. So we'll just keep it like that. Uh, before I close here, let me just show you, uh, just go over one thing. The reason why I, we normally, when you offset things, uh, why you use the time dot delta time, uh, and, and multiply it by whatever variable you have is that uh, you know the time dot delta time is a pretty important thing because whenever you can actually control this to ramp up and down the speed of your um, the speed of your uh, which we call it uh, the the global speed of your game. So for example, in this game, I have a uh, if we can go ahead and play it here. Oh, it might take a while. In this game, I wanted to have the ability to pause and unpause the action. So I have this little hourglass here. And when you click on it, it pauses. You can see all the people stop animating. And you can see that this texture stops animating as well. It's because um, the time dot delta time has been set to zero while this is paused. And then we click on this again. It unpauses it, and you can see that it's been done in a non-destructive way. So let's see what happens if we just offset the or increment the offset by some amount. Offset plus equals point. Give it a very small amount here. All right. So let's see what happens when we do that and we hit the pause button on inside of our game. Okay, it might take a little while to load. Here we go, let's think about it. All right, you can see it's kind of uh, slowly going down there. And let's go ahead and hit our pause button. So you can see that all these guys here are paused. They're not animating, but the texture is still moving. Maybe that's what you want. Maybe you, uh, in fact, want the texture to move independently from that, so for example. But in most cases, you know, you're going to want it to be tied to the speed of your game so that uh, that way everything's controlled at once. So this is very helpful. You could obviously imagine that um, what you could do is you could, for example, put a water texture on something and then you could just add another line of code here. You could kind of duplicate this. If you had something that had a bump map, you could change this to bumper. I can't remember what the, uh, 
what the uh, uh, name is for the bump map, uh, but just go into the documentation, it will tell you. So you could uh, update both of these at once. You could have a nice looking water texture with the bump map and a color texture, and you could use this technique in order to animate the water. You can animate lava, you can animate um, lava lamps, you can do all sorts of things. It's also a, uh, a method you could do if you were making a 2D game. Maybe I can do a tutorial on that later, because uh, I don't have anything rendered right now. But let's say you, you want to make a two-dimensional game with like two-dimensional like hand-drawn sprites. You would have like a plane, and then you would uh, have a, uh, you know, a, 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 an image strip. You would apply that as your material, and then you would increment this offset variable by the, you know, the, the size of the image. So, for example, if each frame of your image was, you know, 30 pixels or something like that, you might say 0 0.30, and then every time they would call the update, the offset would, would increment by that amount, and the, um, the, uh, uh, the image would, would kind of uh, animate on top of the plane. So that's kind of how, uh, that's kind of how these, these things, um, you would animate a, a two-dimensional game. It's a little bit of uh, work maybe, but uh, that's kind of one way of doing it. All right, maybe I could do a tutorial on that one later just to show you how it's done. Okay, but that's basically how to animate uh, textures in uh, Unity. And the other thing you have to remember is things must be uh, UV mapped. Uh, the objects that come in here with Unity, they have their own kind of mapping and stuff, so it's no problem. But if you bring in your own object, it's not UV mapped, you're probably not going to get it to look consistent or correct. UV map your objects before you bring them in there, and uh, they should work fine. So I hope this helps you out.